Um, so I'm, for those who don't know me, so I'm Jérôme François, I'm a co-chair of uh, the um, uh, Network Management Research Group of the IRTF. So this is the, um, this, uh, the meeting, uh, the 61st meeting of the RCN Energy. Um, so before starting uh, the meeting, let me um, just recall for, for those who are aware, for those who are not aware, it's important that we have looked at a research group from the IRTF. We follow the IETF intellectual property rights disclosure rules. Um, in briefly, if you look at the slide, it means that if you present some work related to a patent or something that uh, would be, uh, would be um, that you started to patent, it's important to disclose that and before the meeting. Um, so please um, look on this slide. Uh, I take time to read it. Okay, so another rule is, uh, I think you probably, if it's like me, you, you have this uh, pop-up window that started when as it uh, pop up at the, the meeting startup, that uh, it's important uh, to to know that uh, in, the, in the case of an online meeting, everything that you will say or if your camera is on will be recorded. So by uh, by uh, participating in this meeting to uh, to to some to to agree, you agree to to this rule. And uh, so as you can see here, the meeting is uh, started to to make meeting now. Also important, we have uh, um, privacy and code of conduct. Um, so know that uh, what you will present, what you will say, will be will be public. It's important to know, and also that you have important is that you have to be respectful of what other participants will present, will say. It's uh, really important, and in case of uh, of, of concern or abuse, you can refer to the rules here. So, um, also just to remind that this is a IRTF group. Um, so, of course, we will detail a bit what is IRTF for uh, newcomers in the next presentation. But IRTF basically conduct research. We are not focusing on developing standard, so we're focusing on long-term research. And this is a, uh, uh, the standardization is done as a parallel organization that is IRTF. Uh, of course, we can also publish information of experimental documents in RC series, but really the uh, goal of the RTF is to promote uh, research and collaboration between researchers. So this is an online meeting, uh, fortunately, so when you are not speaking, please mute uh, yourself. And uh, when speaking, important to uh, clearly state your name if you cannot really see why it's always good to restate your name. You have all the link for the for the meeting that you can uh, consult. And important, uh, please go to the to the to the note and add your name to the uh, meeting participant list so that you can keep track of people participate. And although, as I said, it is recorded, so uh, this meeting can be uh, can be replay. Can be you can see this uh, replay of this meeting um, afterward on the uh, YouTube channel of the IETF. Yeah. So uh, after this quick introduction, um, we will give you um, a, a more in detail introduction about what is an energy and what is an IRTF. In particular, this is important because we, we are happy that uh, uh, this an energy meeting is, uh, uh, as you indeed, has invited to be uh, presented within the IM conference, and we uh, uh, so might be more uh, participant to the conference as well. So it's important. To present you what is uh, the energy uh, with, uh, uh, in the next presentation, and then you will we will have two technical talks. So one from Amin Abu Bendi about this routine and zero touch management of network slices in beyond 5G, and the other one from uh, Diego Lopez, which is about uh, the concepts uh, of digital twin network. Um, so if you have any question now before we start with uh, with the next uh, presentation, please let me know.
Hi Jérôme, just checking if you can hear me too. Laurent yes. Zavalia. Yes. Hello Laurent. Yeah. Are you sharing something yet? Yes, you cannot see it. No, I cannot see it. It's ah. so starting to share. Can you try again, please? Okay, so, so nobody has seen my screen? Or... No, it's um, no. It, it, it's oh. like this since the beginning. Oh, okay. So I will just stop and restart, maybe. Can you see it now? Uh, it says starting to share, but uh, it's still a gray screen. Yeah, same for me. Yeah. Want me to try, John? Uh, yeah, maybe better. Yeah. I don't know what, what happens here. Let me stop sharing. Okay, yes. Can you see it, Jerome? No, uh, I can. Yeah. I see it. Yeah, no, I can see. Yes. We can see it, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so, so sorry for this, uh, yeah. Oh, so this, is this issue. So yeah, basically, so you did not see the, the different slides. So maybe we can go again. I think it's important to go quickly through the, through the, the at least the free first slide. And just yeah, what I what I mean is that uh, so the, the meeting is recorded. Um, so basically, you you consent to that, and uh, so there is yes the uh, regarding intellectual property. So here you have all the references. And that I said, I would disclose your role in case of uh, particular in case of patents. And uh, then, if you go to the next slide, Laurent. Yeah, so this is, I think you understand that it's recording. And then, next slide. And uh, yeah, and this is a privacy and code of conduct. So please have a look and. Uh, I have a doubt that it's still recording. Can, can you see? Yes, I think it's recording now, right? Yes. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. And so, so, so I propose that we, we start with the, with the first presentation. Um, so now if you can show the presentation. Yep. It's on. Okay. Um, yeah, th thank you, Laurent. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, we will present now with, uh, I think, uh, we prepared the slide with Laurent um, because we are uh, together a culture of NMRG just to present you what is uh, IRTF and what is NMRG and also what is uh, some of the relation between IETF and IRTF uh, in, this, uh, in this short introduction. Next slide, please, Laurent. Okay, this, I think it's not a version, but anyway, so uh, the questions that we will try to, to answer today are some of the problems, as I say, they sound like uh, very uh, basic, but it's not so, 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 so easy to, to, um, to answer them uh, smoothly. So, but the idea is that um, after this meeting, in particular for people who are not very familiar with uh, IATF, with NMLG, to understand what is the difference between IETF, that is more related, of course, and that is related to standardization and IRTF. Also to understand how you could contribute to uh, IETF or IRTF. And in particular, regarding IRTF is that is our research, which is a difference with an academic conference when you participate to a research group as the IRTF. And mostly today, because we are talking about uh, network management, um, 
we will saw a present in network management research group and emerge and although we present you some uh, practical details on how you can start to contribute to the group and you can be touch with people in the group next slide please Laura. so yes first question first uh, let's say uh, um, point is the um, description of what is IETF and IFTR. Next slide. Okay. Um, no, I think you can yeah, just yeah, make everything appear in the slide. Okay. okay, so as you know, yeah, there are, we could think that the research and center are two isolated walls. Uh, you see on the left, you have some more where you have the, let's say, the research conference, academic conference, usually a sponsor organized by USNIC, SEM, and QPOE. At the right side, you have all the standardization organization, uh, like IETS that we talked today, but there are others like 3 dpp FC, ITU, and so on. And of course, they're not isolated. We um, we need some uh, they need some interconnection uh, between the two because uh, we need, of course, uh, that some research can be transferred from to standardization in order to make things evolving, and also that we need also as a researcher, we also need some input from more, let's say, uh, work in the field, practical uh, work, and so on, practical work. Next slide, Laura. OK, so the first qu question is that uh, why, as a researcher, you should contribute to standard? Uh, an easy answer would be to say that it will help to make the network work better. So it's so simple, but of course, if you just click Three times long and make everything appear. It's really far easier. Um, when you, I think, as a researcher, like uh, I mean, every researcher when they are working on their, of course, their topic, um, at some point they would like also that the research it does not only remain as a theoretical research or uh, applied in a very uh, in a lab environment, but would like also that the research can really be useful, can be reused in real. Life. That's why it's, it's a way that for a researcher it's important, it can be important to contribute to standard. It does not mean that as a researcher you have directly to write standard, but to be in touch with people working on standard. And this is important because my contribution to standard it's also uh, it, it also means that uh, discussing with people in the industry that work on standard, but also to have that feedback regarding the, for example, the proposal, your research proposal. Of the technology you propose and see uh, if it could be applied in the real world, what other problems that you may not, you may have not foreseen, and so on. So. And important, I think the last point is very important. If you look uh, basically on standard, you will realize that uh, most of standard are, are, are uh, written or led by a major industry, uh, of course, with uh, maybe a business point of view. And uh, as a researcher, I think we are also less, um, we are less driven by um, by business, and so it's good that researcher and also interconnection between start out to have, uh, let's say, uh, a known as point of view of the technology as well. Next slide, Laurent, please. So how to contribute? So in, in very schematic way, yes, next slide. Uh, so you have there are different, of course, as I said before, different uh, standardization organization. Here, just a landscape of some of, uh, say, some of uh, protocols or uh, technology or uh, that has been some or uh, that has been uh, sorry that has been standardized at the ETF. You you can see a lot of uh, different uh, uh, technologies that you use every day probably, and. But in a detail, then, if you go to the next slide, Laurent, please. So here is just a very a quick summary of the step, uh, how to make standardization, uh, and basically how to IETF. So you start from maybe from research, but we will discuss a bit that it's not a research at the, it's not preliminary research, it's a research that you already know that can fit some uh, problem for the uh, standardization for example, the IETF that has been already identified by the IETF. Once you have something that is appropriate, then you have to build your community around what you propose and basically to convince people. So you will present what you propose, you will convince people to um, also help, uh, to help you to refine the proposal and also to push the proposal. 
And at some point, if your proposal is enough mature, uh, it should be developed within a, within, a working, within a working group, again, with different type of refinement, different step of review. And, and at the end, uh, it, may, it may lead to a publication as the RFC, uh, so as a standard. So this is important to see is that it's a, quite a long uh, effort because you have, uh, from your own proposal, you have to build a community, you have to give a whole group, and then uh, if you get, uh, let's say, a kind of consensus, um, it should be, uh, it can be a transfer standard. Uh, next slide. So as I said before, don't think that when I put uh, or when it's written research here, it's just uh, you have an idea of research that it solve a, a very uh, a wonderful problem that I think it's uh, very nice to address. That is uh, the way to start to, to, to go to the idea. So when you propose something, it has to fit, uh, it has to be aligned with the uh, IETF um, or Kyra, with the architectural principle of the internet. And only if it fits here, then you could, uh, you could propose something, but it has to be enough mature in terms of development, just not, I mean, uh, a theoretical idea. You need some real, real development or really prototype implementation, probably, to be convincing before going to the IET. Next slide, please. And so then is a question about research because here, uh, uh, in particular today, because we are located with, uh, with Haiyan, we have a lot of researcher in the virtual room. And what will be the role of research uh, in, in IETF? Actually, it's not within IETF, within IETF, which is a parallel organization of the um, IETF. And as you can see on this, this figure here is that it could be seen as a, maybe an accelerator and enabler if you want to go maybe for standardization. It's not only the way to go for standardization, but as you can see here from, let's say, academic work, you can go for IETF to, um, to discuss more and to work more on research problem. And then if it comes enough matters, then you can think about going to the uh, IETF. Next slide, please. Okay, so IETF activities are uh, divided into different groups. Uh, today we'll talk about an energy, but here there are a lot of uh, different groups. Um, basically, all groups work, um, each group uh, works in a different manner, but basically it's, it's the main principle is that it's an open forum where a researcher can exchange ID, can present IDs, uh, even preliminary IDs, can present experience, can present prototype. And, uh, and then, uh, it's some place where uh, the more, let's say, academic researchers, that's like we have in a conference maybe today in IAM, on this week in IAM, where you have more opportunity to uh, meet and uh, discuss with engineers working on practical problems. And this is uh, mainly the difference when you participate to IETF uh, research group or meetings with an academic conference. You have also more uh, interaction with engineers at work um, in the field and can also uh, give feedback about the problems they may encounter in, uh, in reality. And also, you can also propose them some solutions they do not uh, envision for their own problem. So this is very different. I think, of course, even in the IAM conference, we have a, a mix between industry and academia. But I think in IETF, you may find a better mix because also we have co-located meetings with IETF, and we have a lot of uh, uh, people working on engineering uh, aspects. Next slide, please. Okay, I will, I will go quickly through the, the next two slides. There are different, let's say, global activities at the IRTF level to support uh, applied networking research. So for, so applied research in, in networking. One is a workshop that is organized and is collocated with the IETF meeting in July. So we're supposed So if you're interested, you can check this in. Next slide, please. And another one is, um, I would say, Applied Networking Research Prize. Uh, that again is uh, awarded to, to recognize uh, the best uh, results uh, that you may have or any, any other can have in uh, Applied Networking because you can nominate, set, nominate, or nominate other. And interesting, of course, there is a cash prize, but also you're yeah, invited uh, to the IETF and you can 
to give uh, a talk so these two um these two uh, i mean the workshop and the uh, applied networking research prize are two way also to some some or make good publicity of your work uh, to the iatf community so again if you're interested you can check the link all presentation just uh, i didn't say that because it's uh, common for a regular attendant all presentation are available on the website afterwards so you will find all the links next slide please So let's talk now with the uh, NMRG, Network Management Research Group. Next slide. So again, uh, just to uh, repeat again that this is a really a forum for researchers to, um, to exchange together to explore new technology for the management of the internet. So this is a very uh, general uh, thing like that. Uh, so there are different types of, uh, of work that is performed. Uh, some, there's some work uh, answering some uh, some poetry, some work on arch uh, new architecture, maybe for network management, specification of solution, and so on. So. Uh, here is a main, let's say, landing page for NMRG if you want to learn more about the all the activities that have been uh, done in the group. And knowing that it started in uh, 19, uh, so it's quite an old group, and I think the old dust uh, are still active now. And uh, there have been successive waves of some old, um, thematic waves, the first one about management technologies, the second one about autonomic, autonomic network management, and uh, no, I will discuss a bit more in, in the next. But what is important to understand here is that the, um, some of the thematic, the objective of the group are not fixed uh, and can be uh, and are regularly revised, revised thanks to the participant proposition interest. It's not only uh, for the chair that we say what we will do in the group, it's really a community effort to ref refine, revise, revise uh, um, our agenda. Next slide, please, Laurent. So now look, uh, we will look a bit more at the uh, current activities in the group. So the um, overarching theme is serving of self-managing network, which is somewhat global of automatic networking, but with maybe a more we are expecting more automation in uh, network management. I think you uh, have seen a lot of uh, paper uh, talking about that, and we will see a lot, I think, this week at IM as well. Um, of course, if we, even if we think that we'll have uh, several self driving or self managing, we are also, uh, also aware that there will be still some of the human in the loop somewhere, and we need infer interface between the human and the self driving system. And that's why we will we partially promote intent-based networking in the group, our IBM, that I will describe a bit later. And also for having self-driving uh, network, like any self-driving system, we need an intelligent mechanism. And we are focusing a bit on AI, but not only in the group as well. Next slide. So, um, so for here is the um, so some of the uh, research item or work item of uh, the IBM within the group. So we it's a some more logical um, a logical flow. So we start with problem statement and fundamental concept. And if you just click on, so in regard to that, uh, we particularly have a document which is a quite mature now, uh, for which we target an information on RFC. Uh, where we give our own definition on what is an intent. In particular, we say the declaration of operation goal. So you declare the outcome of what you expect uh, uh, to have in the network, not the way to do it. In particular, we make the distinction. When, you, when I say we, just as a group, because no, it's, a, it's a group document, but uh, this is led by, by some authors. Uh, and so we make the difference between intent and policy. That is very important to say. We detail also what are the expected functionality in the IBM system and life cycle. So this is, again, this is uh, the, the vision that we have in an energy. So IBM in other, in other places that can be uh, with different vision. But it's important for our work in IBM that we set out what are the basis of our work. Then, next slide, Laurent, please. Um, then we have also one work which is quite mature and for, for also we are targeting an information LFC, which is about intent classification, uh, where it's somehow helped to, uh, in the first uh, draft I mentioned, it was um, a general definition of intent here. 
it's put in uh, in uh, let's say in with uh, it's illustrated with uh, uh, some uh, some example in different type of intent solution, carrier network, DC, and enterprise network. It's important to see that this draft also provide a way for anyone who would like to classify the type of intent uh, he, he would like to use a methodology by identifying the user, the type, the scope, and etc. And so now, what what is the status uh, of the group? So those two work are quite uh, are quite mature now, but now we are uh, really in the step four and five. Uh, that is about the architecture of the IBM system we like to promote within the group, and this is mainly driven by use cases. So we have different use cases that are presented that have been presented in the group for any measurements, slicing, and interconnection. So this is really, so let's say, one of the hot topics of the moment in the group. So if you are interested to participate, if you work on IBM and would like to propose for use cases, this is really a good timing because this effort is really under consideration now. But then next step, we will also implementation, integrity, and authority. And next slide, please, Laurent. And we have also some, uh, some work from here because we participated to a hackathon uh, with a multiple multi-level approach to IBM uh, implementation. So above all, above all, what I would like to highlight here is that you can see here we have already different type of work that has been performed. We have Hackathon, uh, we have some discussions, some implementation, also some information. Uh, if you go to next slide, Laurent, please. Uh, I think Olga is uh, raising hands and uh, I'd like to share something. Yeah. Hi, hi, Jeremy and Ella. Uh, could you just tell me what's the status for the informational RFC and uh, what's currently going on and when do you think we will be able to achieve that for the first dra two drafts? So, uh, for the first draft, um, so all the, the, the draft is, uh, is in my hand. I, you know that uh, it has been... Uh, has been uh, revised according to the to the review we received, and as a, as a shepherd, I have to check if uh, no, uh, it's enough mature, and uh, I mean if it has to go again through a last call, or if it's uh, then okay to, uh, to to propose. And for the second draft, as far as I know, uh, Laurent is a shepherd, yeah. and we do the we do. Um, some or summary of the of the comment we received. Yeah, yeah the, the draft is also with me. I have to uh, write my ship review, so this is in my to-do list and uh, will be done whenever I find time to do that. But I, I know it's late, but it's uh, it's uh, it will come soon. Okay, thanks. Please let us know if we can help in any way, and I will give you some material or anything. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, next slide, Laurent, please. So the other topic is about artificial intelligence in network management. And again, here you will see other type of activity we, we have in the group. So the first one is more about uh, documenting um, major research and in AI for network management. Next slide, Laurent. And so here is a some of what uh, we expect is either white paper or informational RFC, but basically now it's a collaborative document uh, where we try to involve both network management and AI expert to list what are the challenges of the coupling between AI and AM. So it's not a list of use cases because we had the experience before where we start from use cases, but some more people come with use cases, present use cases, it's nice, we have a lot of discussion, but then from that use case, it was not easy to somehow uh, extract uh, some common challenges that we face in uh, that we are facing in, in uh, when using AI in network management. So again, if you're interested, it's uh, this uh, document is uh, under progress. We we have uh, documented different type of challenge. Some are really more related to common problem in AI, but of course that we have also in, in our domain like uh, explainability. And the mapping of AI technique for, for a particular problem. We are also very in our domain because we are targeting several networks. We need also AI for taking decisions. This is a, a bit different, not from all domain, but at least it's uh, it's uh, somehow not only just uh, analyze the data and give some results. It needs to take some decision. 
And also we also think that it's not only using AI for network management, also network management can, can support a better AI. So this is also a work which is uh, really, let's say, under consolidate, consolidate, consolidation now. So really open, if you want to contribute, uh, you can, uh, you are really uh, welcome to do so. We will also discuss this uh, topic uh, in the panel Wednesday morning at the conference that is also related to uh, the uh, research challenge of using or of AI and network management. There are two other points. One is about organizing a practical competition and the other one about supporting more um, discussion as an open forum. So for the competition is um, a bit on pause because uh, in, due to lack of time, so except is our volunteers ready to uh, also to support these activities. So this kind of a practical competition like uh, you have in other domain. But of course, we are also regular talk uh, so, as you leave from people that presented our papers, people who have papers in conference can present again their work into the, the group. Um, so, I want to highlight that here if uh, you never participated to, to an energy, it's also a good, to, um, good and easy way to, to do, let's say, a, a first participation is that you can just basically represent the work that you have already presented in the conference. So. Um, if you are interested to do so, um, you can really uh, contact us. We also envision to organize something more regular, like a webinar series. Uh, to be honest, we, um, we put uh, that on, uh, on pause as well because, with, you, you know, with, um, uh, with the, let's say, uh, pandemic uh, timing, we are all on online event in uh, web conference and telco. So we, we think that it was not a good timing for launching a new online event. Uh, so we prefer maybe to, to resume a uh, um, uh, bit later. I think there is a question in the chat, right? Yes, for the, um, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Laurent. <laughs> yeah, we have to also resume a bit for the Google Docs, so we'll organize a dedicated meeting for that um, as well. Uh, next slide, Laurent, please. And the, let's say the overarching term, which is about serving managing networks. So here it's really open, open to debate any new architectural, new architectural framework uh, to also understand what are the current reference model, what are the best practice, what could be done better, and so on and so on. And, so on. and it's important, this, uh, let's say, topic is very important because it also helps us to really understand what is the positioning of the group uh, regarding other group, uh, other community, and also uh, see how we differ from the other, or we are close to the others. Next slide, Laurent. And so here we have uh, regular different topics that are presented, uh, like uh, ECR policy management, uh, that, that, uh, that basically is, uh, is investigative in the IETF working with net mode. We have digital twins that will be uh, presented today. We, we have also um, residual configuration. Next slide, please, Laurent. I'll speed up a bit because I think we're already late. So in summary, we have two core topic, IBM and AI, um, with some, some more I presented what is the status and what are the current hot, uh, let's say, hot topic in this uh, topic, so, somehow. Um, it's important that uh, for people who are not familiar with IRTF and MRG is that we are not, uh, as usually we say that as a IRTF, Research group, we are, we are a pre centralization group. You know, we, of course, you can go through IETF to do some standardization, but we are a research group, not a pre standardization group. So we do um, a lot of things that uh, our, our expectation is not to, uh, to, to have uh, everything published as a standard or as, uh, as the RFC, but also to support really a research collaboration, this technical presentation, a hackathon, your joint implementation. It's really to to somehow um, make people uh, working, uh, collaborating together from engineer world, from research world as well. So in practice, you can start from the group web page and subscribe to mailing lists. If you want to be aware of the different meetings, everything is announced on the mailing list. We usually have a virtual meeting or monthly, not exactly monthly. Um, and we have collocated meetings with the ETF, which are um, Normally, but uh, for the, the last one, we're also online. 
Um, you can participate to all meetings for free for meetings that are collected with IETF when it is uh, physically, of course, you have to uh, pay for the IETF. And currently also for um, IETF, which is online, you have also to pay, but uh, you, have, you can also apply for fee waiver uh, to, to participate online and uh, there is no, I think, no limitation for fee waiver. So it's uh, really open. So you don't need to pay. You don't need to have your uh, institution affiliated with the, the IETF or IETF. You can uh, freely participate. And for any question, please uh, contact us. So, is there any question from the audience? I just would like to add on top of what Jerome said about uh, what RTF and energy are is that really we are a research community. Uh, on network management, so that's why we are also participating with IMN norms. We want to really liaise with um, IEEE, CNOM, and IFIP working group 6.6 .6, uh, communities on network management network operations. So we think we, this is really complementary. As you mentioned, we are not doing standardization, but participating to the IRTF gives you also uh, experience and opportunities to discuss with operators, engineers, vendors that are actually implementing and developing the, the uh, internet standards. So this is a, an invaluable proximity and experience. So it's, I think if you ask different colleagues in the academia and they are many in, in the uh, in IM and DOMS that have already participated in IETF, it's very, um, IETF and IETF, it's very valuable experience, not necessarily for your academic CV, but from um, um, a, a I mean, from work experience and, and, and diversity of what you can uh, can can meet and, 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 and do. So I think it's really, uh, we invite you, it's a very open forum. Bring your, your problems, bring your research questions. This is completely open and you can, uh, I mean, expose it to a very different community that one you, you, you have in conferences. And um, I think we, I mean, we really invite you to, to, to come and participate. Laurent, maybe we can uh, yes, continue we with can your presentation. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Laurent. I think if there is no question, yes, we can, we can move to the next presentation. So, uh, next presentation is uh, given by, uh, by Amina Rubenlia with distributed and zero touch management of network slices in Beyond 5G. Um, Amina, do you want to share your screen or, or do you prefer that Laurent shows a slide? Hi, uh, I can do. Okay. Um, yes, you can see your screen. Okay, I, I, I was wondering if, if it would be more maybe interactive to have the video on, but now that I'm sharing, I cannot find the, the button. <laughs> uh, let me see. Well, I, I cannot go back to, to have the video on, but uh, let me try one minute again. I maybe stop, oh yeah, on it. Okay, uh, and oh, maybe that's the, not the right screen. Do, do you see the full mode? No, mm, maybe not. Okay, and I, will, I think I need to share the other screen uh, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That should work. Yep, that now should work. Screen. Perfect, okay. thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, 
nice to see you again. I think I am is a nice opportunity, but also an energy. So I would like to thank uh, uh, Laurent and Jérôme for the opportunity. I, so I'm Amina Boubentia. I'm a researcher and project manager in Orange Labs uh, in France. And uh, I would be speaking on the name of uh, the consortium, all the partners of uh, Mombi 5G project, uh, dealing with management and orchestration of networks for Beyond 5G. So it's an ICT20 uh, project. Um, as it deals with management, that's a very nice, uh, just to join what Jerome was, was saying about uh, being with IM and NOMS conference and CNSM as well. Um, that's a very uh, management focused uh, collaborative project, Euro European project. Um, and the focus as we uh, I will be uh, presenting is uh, the distribution of management and the automation of management with also uh, a, t a network slicing as a target. Uh, as uh, Jerome and Laurent suggested, I, I kept the, the focus more on the architecture rather than the very uh, scientific contributions. But um, as I said, that that would be an overview and I'll be happy to uh, to answer your questions if you have any by email. So I, I, I you have my email here. So um, Mombi 5G project uh, really uses as um, main uh, proposals the distribution, as I said, distribution uh, of management and the automation uh, through the use of machine learning and AI uh, for, uh, um, yeah, for some parts of management orchestration and it targets network slicing and also large scale um, infrastructures. Uh, some 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 keywords here are distributed management, zero touch management and orchestration, network slicing, massive scales, beyond 5G, but also um, the project deals a lot with deep reinforcement learning, federated learning, and I have here a teaser MSAE and DE, which are very um, specific to the project. So. An overview of the consortium. So, uh, Mombi 5G project is um, uh, composed of 12 partners. So, uh, along eight countries, nine from industry and three from academia, uh, and has a budget of 5.5 uh, uh, million euros and uh, is up uh, for three, uh, 36 months. And now we're, at, we're exactly at the midterm of the project. Uh, so it started in 2019. And uh, so uh, if I'd start from, from the left, we have Ericsson uh, in Ireland, um, Beacom in France, Orange France, Ericom uh, France, CTGC Spain, Ecuador at Spain, NEC Germany, Alto Finland, University of Alto in Finland, uh, Orange Poland and um, I don't see the rest of the screen. <laughs> Citrix uh, in Greece, OT in Greece as well, and EBOS in Cyprus. So it's quite well balanced uh, uh, consortium, uh, mainly with regards to uh, management and machine learning uh, expertise. The structure of the project um, is into five, seven uh, work packages, uh, five main. Uh, and technical work packages, and two, there are more uh, project management and communication. So uh, dealing with um, management uh, and architecture, uh, we have work package two, and uh, distribute more focused are distributed monitoring and analytics engine, um, very linked to the distributed AI-driven uh, decision engine for slice management and um, a work package that is uh, cross-functional, which is security and energy uh, efficiency. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, a main, another main work package is uh, everything related to implementation and, and box and demos. The approach uh, that the project is following as a methodology, let's say, of, of organizing the project is to 
um, well, some of them has already finished, but working on um, everything related to, to network architecture and use cases. So uh, thinking of how uh, this massive scale can uh, can can be highlighted through 5G use cases, what KPIs should be considered, what are the requirements, mainly the ones related to the analytical engine and decision engine. Uh, phase two is the data-driven algorithmic innovation, and that's the the deep scientific, let's say, uh, technical work. Uh, so that's the design of the algorithms going inside the analytic engine, the design of uh, the decision engine, and all the mechanisms related to security and energy efficiency. And um, phase three is the, the evaluation and testing, and that's the, the design of, uh, uh, let's say, a global framework uh, platform to, to have the, the pieces of box gathered uh, to, to show the, the whole vision. The uh, evaluation of the AE, so analytical engine and decision engine alone, separate, uh, separate testing, and also the same mechanisms of security and energy uh, separate. Uh, and the project is targeting two main POCs. Uh, uh, first POC on uh, zero touch service management uh, to, to show it end to end with some scalability um, use cases. And uh, also as security is an important part of the project, uh, there is AI assisted security monitoring uh, POC. Um, we'll see it later, but the, the project is so focused on machine learning, so that was uh, a phase zero on, on data acquisition and generation, so that's um, a cross-functional phase, let's say, that it's, of course, uh, continuing for, for each uh, algorithm design. The main uh, concept of uh, Mombi 5G is to focus on the distribution of uh, management functions, uh, especially especially for network slicing. So uh, it defines uh, a let's say a central uh, element with central policies uh, defined by the uh, slice owner or the slice provider. Uh, it can be network operator and uh, relies on to uh, centralized uh, analytical engine and decision engine. And it defines uh, several technological domains. Uh, here I, I have only three, but actually it's uh, the edge domain, run domain, cloud domain with uh, with core functions. So, um, and actually we, are, we also have uh, ones related to devices, but this is more, um, uh, the like, what we call ex extreme edge. So each technical domain relies on the three functions, monitoring system, analytical engine, and decision engine. And these are um, should cope and cope with the uh, uh, technical features and the technical data of each technical uh, technological domain. So um, this is uh, what we uh, are insisting on in terms of separation of concerns and separation abstraction of um technical uh details from a domain to another and also we assume that uh within each technolo technological domain we have uh we can have an, a slice that should be managed within uh the domain by uh independent network functions um, as, um for management orchestration functions i mean So this is just to um, show that we're aligned with many other projects in terms of uh, stakeholders for network slicing. Uh, so, um, of course, we assume that we are supporting services, uh, communication services uh, uh, from different providers that would need support from the network in terms of network slicing. Uh, and the answer of uh, a network slice coming from a network slice provider would be managed by the same provider or from another one, but uh, the same provider should uh, rely on uh, different infrastructures, uh, especially if it spans different technological uh, technologies or, or generations. 
and uh, of course uh, each uh, client is a slice tenant uh, in terms of uh, using consuming the network the network slice and it relies of course on, on different uh, providers of uh, virtual network functions um, so behind each uh, each let's say uh, brick here we can um, see also the stakeholder in terms of, of, of service um, service provider as a service provider if it if it's service level application level or uh, network or infrastructure we needed to do some work, but I'm not going to do, to go into details. Some some work on the the impact uh, and and relevance with regards to five GPPP use uh, KPIs. So um, I assume many projects need to do that. So um, with regards to some uh, use cases, uh, many of the uh, performance KPIs uh, appear to be uh, to be to have a high uh, high impact uh, because it of course uh, the project is with automation, but also in terms of social societal and social KPIs. Let's say uh, everything related to uh, security, for example, goes in line with uh, the importance that the the EU. Uh, and 5G PPP gives to 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 these KPIs, um, and in terms of um, business uh, KPIs, well, all um, all the stakeholders, as 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 we saw, um, it well, it goes with uh, with the, the this openness and and this um, duplication of roles uh, that virtualization and automation gives uh to um to the network uh, let's say the network uh, ecosystem or telecommunication ecosystem to give a view of uh the architecture um we uh define uh three main layers an infrastructure layer a management orchestration layer and a business layer uh, what's most important here uh, in the infrastructure layer, for example, we uh, define as many uh, infrastructure domain managers uh, as as infra as infrastructure domains. So um, we should be able to include any a technological uh, or any technology as uh, an infrastructure domain on itself, uh, but also add to that that the fact that it comes from a provider uh, A or from a provider B. So um, this uh, structures somehow the uh, infrastructure level. Uh, and here we're focusing on uh, to show uh, the, the management. So the IDM here is the manager of the infrastructure domain and it can be independent, of course, and very specific to the technology. At the management and orchestration layer, we uh, find uh, what we call the domain management and orchestration. So uh, this has, a, uh, let's say, a slice of view rather than an, an, an sub-slice or uh, a technological slice uh, uh, part uh, in the infrastructure. So here we have the slice uh, level and uh, we assume that we can have as many uh, DMOs as um, as slices uh, as we target. Um, I can say it now, so there, there's a separate slide on that. Um, the the project targets the in slice management and the inter slice management. So the DMO level deals with the, the intra slice management, and uh, the the upper layer, which is the IDMO for in uh, inter-slice, uh, inter-domain um, management and orchestration is uh, the, the function that would deal with the end-to-end -end, uh, view, it, so the inter-slice uh, view. And uh, we assume that we need uh, an, an exposure, uh, let's say an exposure layer uh, from this management orchestration uh, towards a business layer where we collect uh, all the uh, requests from tenants uh, and the relation, of course, with the OSS, uh, OSS BSS. Uh, so here we're still um, linked. We're still dealing with uh, slice management as, uh, let's say, as as a function to in the business layer, but as a function to 
to to make sure we have the the the, the request, uh, and the rest is is uh, dealt with in the management and orchestration layer. And if we zoom a little bit on the MombiVG uh, portal, uh, there are uh, some very specific functions like the, the access management or uh, the databases for uh, the tenant subscribers or users, um, everything related to uh, what the monitoring is, uh, is needs to uh, show at, at this portal in terms of, um, let's say, stability or SLA, SLA compliance. Um, there are some uh, APIs linked to the lifecycle management, so that would be, there are links to the IDMO and the DMO, and um, of course the validation of the templates. So when uh, when we have a request, we need to to go through uh, the validation. That's, that's quite classic, but uh, of, of of the the the, com the composition of the, of the slice itself, or, or its its description. Uh, just to summarize it, uh, this before to go before going to a more complex figure is that uh, um, the fact that we uh, target the separation of uh, technological domains, we assume that we also separate uh, concerns. Uh, I know not everyone uh, likes this term, but it, it it's it's somehow separation of um, of technical. Uh, features and very specific uh, features that uh, there is no need to add it to a main or a centralized um, orchestrator. So uh, this is what's meant here by, the, by, by this feature, the distribution of the functions because it goes uh, down to uh, distributed infrastructure domains, um, the support of management uh, as a service. So each, actually there are brokers uh, a, that expose, uh, um, that allows to expose uh, management functions themselves. So the, the, the IDM at the, at the um, the infrastructure domain, but also the DMO and, and IDMO, IDMO uh, in in the slice in the slice level. Um, I'm not directly um, involved in security, but uh, there are uh, very good works. I mean, a lot of work on on the slice security. So each function is including. Uh, the the S of the F F cups F F cups for for security and uh, this is uh, in the intra and inter slice uh, the hierarchy of course so we have the 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 inter slice level that allows to have this end to end view and uh, along with security the energy aware uh, infrastructure management um, is uh, is using programmability in order to see how uh, energy uh, related policies can be can be enforced, um, and also uh, the the in slice management. Usually, we speak about sub slices, but uh, of course, we can assume that a tenant is requesting just uh, um, uh, let's say a run slice, and that would be for him, and in uh, just the complete slice, and we should have separate management functions for that, and that would uh, be the in-slice um, management capabilities. And of course, scalability uh, for the slice management is that um, actually we 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 see and when, when we look closely to uh, Etsy ZSM, so Zero Touch Service uh, Network and Service Management uh, work, and uh, we're aligned with with many of the uh, other features, and we try to go further on that. Um, for example, how we can enhance scalability using the the closed loop uh, automation, but also uh, the massive distribution and how uh, this helps in in the scalability, and, and also just uh, considering uh, infrastructure domains that um, that are large scale. So this is the let's say a complex figure to show, for example, uh, so many of the notions I have presented uh, before, but uh, here at least we can see how the functions can uh, can be uh, exposed and how uh, we can assume uh, the use of machine learning, of course, can be applied to the same functions but at different levels. So we can we can think of um, um, 
a management function, uh, an ML-based management function uh, applied to, uh, let's say, uh, a network slice uh, from one tenant, but also to another tenant, but this stays uh, completely, of course, uh, separate. Uh, so this is like reusing the, the functions, but separating, continuing to separate the, um, the, the management functions themselves, so, so the, the, the levels themselves. Um, so if I uh, go uh, beyond that, uh, in addition to the, the machine learning algorithms that uh, that would be integrated within the functions, we assume uh, the use of control loops at also multiple levels. So uh, the, the OSS VSS level uh, with uh, ideally, well, for, for the, 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 the OSS mainly, and um, of course the technological domains themselves at the at the infrastructure level at the slice level and at the uh, at the nodes and uh, let's say composed composed uh, services uh, level and if we uh, look at um, Actually, I have many slides on the internal structure of each uh, of each main component, and if we look at the inter-domain orchestrator, the one that gives the end-to-end -end view, uh, so it's separated into functional layer and non uh, non-functional layer. So uh, the functional layer is somehow uh, the the functions, uh, the management functions, uh, in 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 terms of 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 apps caps uh, and uh, orchestration. So it it also have the the um, all the databases and and templates for the 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 main management functions, but the the non-functional layer. Uh, related to to the, the interdomain orchestrator is uh, based on these MS uh, monitoring system, analytical engine, and decision engine, and uh, it's it stays with within the management uh, the management layer, but it can go uh, to very specific uh, actions. For example, mainly if um, if if the if we're sure that the the the, the slice is uh, distributed or have different technological domains, so you can imagine that this uh, inter-domain orchestration can be uh, very specific at the technological domains, uh, and that would uh, fill, let's say, uh, the the sub layers, the MSAE and DE sub layers, with very specific. Um, uh, with regards to data, at least, very specific uh, solutions. Uh, also, the, the so the okay, I mean, yes, I, yes. Um, how many slides do you still have to present? Okay, I can I can I can skip the the details here. Uh, maybe just to uh, I, I will skip the 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 internal structures. Uh, just to maybe uh, show uh, very quickly the monitoring system sub layer. Uh, here, for example, um, the all all the functions of the monitoring system uh, are uh, can be exposed to the elements manager, and uh, have, uh, for example, deal with everything related to data collection, information connect collection, and ag aggregation, processing, calculation, etc. Uh, if I try to go very quickly, so the analytics engine uh, deals with the FCAPs, uh, so false security performance accounting, and also exposes these uh, capabilities. And the decision engine, uh, same thing, but has uh, the ability because it, 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 it integrates uh, AI-based uh, uh, algorithms that can take the decision and, and give it to the, to the uh, DMO and IDMO. Uh, have the same management functions, but have the decision uh, onboarded. And so it, it doesn't do the analytics uh, because this is in the in the uh, AE sub sub layer. Uh, maybe I can also skip some details here. Uh, Jerome, do you think? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see that. Yeah, that, that's very short. Okay, maybe just uh, this uh, slide. If we, when you have the slides, if if you would like, if you're curious to see how this can be uh, instantiated within um, within, uh, for example, different technological domains, then uh, here we have uh, edge, run, and core, 
and uh, we have tried to illustrate one single tenant over three technological domains. So you can you can really zoom to see how this is uh, concretely uh, can be concretely instantiated. Um, well, maybe I, I can rather take questions than continue just to 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 move on very quickly on on the slides. I don't know. So. Two, two main use cases and uh, a very uh, complete platform in Barcelona that is very integrative, so to, to host the, the box. And you can find here links to all what is uh, uh, getting out from, 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 from the, the project in terms of uh, deliverables, uh, publications, newsletters, but, and also I really suggest uh, the video presentation uh, that has uh, been published. And yeah, so thank you. Sorry, sorry for maybe the timing. I see. I, I, I think we were uh, quite uh, behind schedule. Yeah, thank you, Amina. Uh, so, so, so no problem. I, I was also a bit late on this. I was explaining why you are late as well. So, any question for Amina? Yeah, I think we have Phil, which is uh, wanted to ask something. Okay. Hello. Um, it's, it's, yeah. Bill Erdley here. Thanks very much, Amina. That was some good overview, interesting stuff, what you're up to. I wondered if you could just say a little bit about, um, in terms of the of the machine learning that the project's doing, what I didn't quite pick up what it's what it's learning, you know, what it's, is it making it, is this about just how, um, you know, what choices is it making? It's sort of something to do with the slicing, but I didn't quite gather what it was actually doing. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, uh, at least from uh, from the the orange contribution, we're we're dealing with uh, uh, with uh, resource allocation, so it's placement. Sorry, it's placement somehow. So uh, one one of the functions. So actually, the the the, the main proposal was to um, so it was a DRL, so deep reinforcement learning uh, algorithm to see the, uh, so that separates the domains uh, and see how uh, each domain can learn to uh, allocate its resources separately. Uh, so this is part of the orchestration, uh, the, 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 the infrastructure domain orchestration. And um, so it, yeah, actually it, it, it learns to, uh, to do the placement, uh, but it's not that independent uh and we added actually a control so what the what we have called uh uh control by heuristics so we called it heuristically assisted or aided uh deep reinforcement learning to optimize the 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 orchestration of of network slices so um the same learning agents are uh within the separate domains and we have a, a centralized uh learning agent centralized DRL um that allows to uh, yeah to, to, to have the the end-to-end -end view so it, it actually what what it learns so we have uh, a feature extraction uh, automated feature extraction from the the physical layer so from from the infrastructure layer and uh it learns actually to to orchestrate if if i can uh, summarize it that way thank you I've got plenty more questions, but I'll, I'll let other okay. people ask. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> no next. problem. But of course, um, um, yeah, that's maybe short. And 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 um, please just drop me an email, and we can we can discuss. Thank you, Amina. I, I think we need to, to switch to the uh, next presentation, which will be given okay. by Diego. Thanks again, Amina. Sorry, we You're are welcome. Bit, uh, Thank you. No problem. <laughs> challenging to, to handle things. Um, Diego, are you ready? I was in the process of um, muting and um, not the like. Hello. Um, you, you prefer to share yourself or you want me to share? Uh, I think I can share. Uh, unless uh, we see any insurmountable problem, I. Now I'm currently sharing the first slide. Yeah, it's good. I think okay. So well, uh, good, <clears throat> good evening, good morning, whatever in the uh, whatever the zone you are. Hello, everybody. The idea the idea is to introduce you 
Well, uh, this is a, a this is a sort of a continuation of what uh, Jerome and, um, and uh, Roan was uh, were presenting about how the, the the whole NMRG works and the and the process because it's precisely the, the introduction of of an ongoing work on a on a draft on a particular draft that is associated with a with a concept that uh, this list of of people you see there. Uh, are working on with it's a, it's a document we started uh, i don't know uh, probably it was presented uh, three itfs meetings uh, ago and right now we are about uh, the last version is version four we are for the fourth iteration i am preparing personally i'm preparing a, a, a version five and uh, this is how it, it evolves by uh, by the uh, uh, interaction with the rest of the community, the uh, uh, feedback we get and additional ideas and well, and the, and the interaction among, among the authors. The idea is, uh, I mean, the, the idea of this uh, work is to explore the, uh, the um, application of digital twin principles to, to uh, network management and, and, and to network experimentation in general. Uh, we we uh, started from the, uh, say, this idea that is, uh, I guess, that you are familiar with is uh, digital replicas of physical entities that are called digital twins that are uh, rely on a, on a, a continuous flow of data from the uh, from the physical environment, and that are uh, use uh, and rely as well on a, on artificial intelligence to simulate to to emulate or make a synthetic. Um, environment that behaves uh like the uh, the, the physical uh <clears throat> the physical system that is uh, or, or let, let's call it the physical twin so it is possible to uh, uh make a to have a better understanding to reduce costs in in, in evaluating choices and, and to be in a, let's say on the safe side when trying to experiment with systems that are ex extremely complex or, or even dangerous uh, certain experiments. We we in Spanish used to say uh, um, we used to have a say that is you should always make experiments with lemonade. Uh, that uh, and this is precisely this. I mean, when we're talking about digital twins, we're talking about the lemonade, digital lemonade that we can use and is not so so dangerous when you uh, in, in the case of uh, experimenting with something that can be uh, disruptive. In terms of cost, or, or even, or even in terms of uh, serious damage to to lives or nature or whatever, the main element uh, for sure is the uh, the connections the connections you have with the uh, with the physical system with the physical twin in terms of sensors and actuators, the use of AI to to precisely to simplify and to somehow to uh, uh, reduce the amount of of uh, computing or simulation power that you need for for reflecting. Really, uh, really, really reflecting the, the behavior, the use of uh, communication that has to be as, as uh, uh, real time as possible, especially in, in, in cases like the, uh, the like the network mechanisms for representation. So you can reason. I mean, humans can reason and work with the with the uh, with the whole system and understand what is uh, uh, what's going on. Essentially, uh, it's a trust fabric that allow uh, the real twin to trust the digital twin with some decision and the uh, digital twin to trust the uh, physical twin when collecting data and the uh, and the mechanisms around privacy and security that are especially relevant in environments like the uh, like uh, like a network because among other things it's uh, very likely uh, well you can't simply not use personal data for any kind of processing without uh, the uh, um, express authorization of the owner of the data and that poses interesting uh, regulatory issues if uh, if you go that way in the in the case of networks uh, in particular the idea is that uh, well the, uh, uh, the idea is that uh, as i said is about uh, finding a way in which uh, an efficient and uh, we can rely on these techniques to improve the uh, the, the life uh, the life cycle of uh, network innovations and the uh, and shorten the uh, uh, time to market in a, in a, oh sorry i have a problem with my window i need to fix it okay so the uh, the way in which uh, in which we experiment with the network and we we experiment with new evolutions and uh, sorry new uh, new innovations 
and how we can make them available in the network uh, sooner. So this draft, this document uh, starts by defining um, and what I, what comes in the uh, in the uh, in the following slides is precisely about the uh, the contents of the documents and, and, and the current state. The uh, uh, starts by defining what a digital network is. Uh, is a, a virtual representation of a, of a real we call it a physical network. This is something that is can be a little bit. Uh, um, uh, contentious in these days in which everything is virtualized and running in cloud like uh, environment, but basically is the real network probably physical, we should go into something more talking about real but is that whatever the real network is and is used for for the uh, goals that a, a digital twin is used and is basically based on flows of, on, the, on the flow of data on network models, that is something that in which the ITF is extremely active. And for sure, on, on open interfaces in which, as well, uh, there is a, a, a clear work inside the ITS. So these are these are the uh, uh, the network digital twin is in charge of analyzing, diagnosing, diagnosing, emulating, and controlling the uh, uh, eventually co controlling the uh, um, uh, uh, the real network, and is uh, uh, composed of four uh, essential elements. Uh, the first one going from uh, top uh, top left left in the uh, and the other, uh, clock, uh, clockwise, the first one is about the, the, the model, the mechanisms for mapping. So supporting how uh, a, a, a real network maps on, on, on a particular digital twin and eventually how two virtual, uh, uh, two virtual twins can um, engage as well. Because we will see that one of the goals of, the, of this environment is precisely to have several choices at the same time running and, and derive some conclusions for it. The, uh, the interfaces and basically the interfaces down to the uh, uh, down to the uh, what well, down the interfaces towards and from the uh, the real network and the interfaces with any other applications that can be used to exercise the uh, the digital twin. Basically the data that goes through those interfaces and data in this sense is that we, we have to, to think in in the uh, in terms that this data that flows in both directions is telemet telemetry data, but as well is about action data that is taken. I mean the, the information of the actions that are taken by the, or decided by the uh, network digital twin and how they uh, they flow, and finally uh, the models and how how we perform on the one hand the mapping between uh, the uh, um, real network and the uh, virtual uh, the virtual twin and the models that we're using for uh, emulating the behavior of the real network inside the digital twin from the uh, from the, func the functional point of view is that analyzing diagnosing emulating and controlling the uh, the, the goal is as, uh, as we were discussing uh, before is about the, the possibility of, of of optimizing the decision making optimizing the uh, the uh, network uh, uh, layout optimizing the uh, way in which we deal with net of footprint, lowering the cost, making a much uh, safer or having a much safer uh, procedures for uh, uh, performing the, the assessment of, uh, of which are the, the, uh, the innovations that can be applied to the network. Being doing this uh, uh, in, in, with uh, regulatory compliance and, and, and respecting the, the privacy of, uh, of our users. And in something something that is equally important, which is something that as well is uh, really expensive and complicated, is to customize training training of all kind of uh, of intelligence, natural and artificial, humans and machines. The idea is that uh, is to apply the data and the behavior and the different behaviors that we can um, exercise on a, on a digital twin into improving improving the training. What is important as well is that uh, the digital tooling being a, a, a com composition of software modules basically is something that allows us to orchestrate and derive uh, and change uh, the, the, the system be behavior. So we can adapt and we have, uh, we, we can uh, evaluate how the network uh, would behave with different configurations and we have we, we have the possibility of doing it in a repeatable way 
that implies that we can replicate different network conditions on demand. And uh, this is, for example, think about uh, training a, a machine learning which you're interested in a particular pattern of traffic that is quite uh, quite unusual, but it's, uh, it's interesting, the possibility of precisely reproducing this, uh, sorry, repeating this, or reproducing, the re making it reproducible, that implies that uh, we can apply, we, we can reply different uh, combination of events and under control uh, conditions, so we can derive a knowledge of which are the, the parameters and the factors that influence the natural behavior and the certain uh, and the particular circumstances. This is so far the uh, the architecture framework we have, which uh, for those of you familiar with the uh, with the uh, SDN architecture would somehow resemble it because we have a physical network that uh, provides data and receives control actions. We have the network digital twin, and here we are playing with the idea that we have a. a <laughs> A, digi a digital team network and a network digital twin. The network digital twin is the, uh, is the uh, uh, network twin that we have in, inside the network digital twin. And is, uh, is about exposing certain uh, capabilities and, and receiving input. Normally, or very likely in form of intent from different applications. The physical network is, is uh, as I said, is the real network is that uh, all the elements uh, or data from the, uh, the network elements uh, is fed into the uh, network uh, digital twin entity through uh, the cell phone interfaces. What is important is that, uh, again, is that we very likely, and this is something that we are elaborating right now, is how we support with the data infra infrastructure, how the data is aggregated, normalized, anonymized, uh, um, uh, tra translated into, uh, into an ontology, making an assessment of the provenance uh, because of the, uh, of the trust you can put or not on the, uh, on the different data sources. This is, this is essential. So what we have is that we can dynamically select different data sources and, and put more focus on particular aspects of the uh, of the of the network for for the different uh, tasks of the uh, of the twin or for the different twins that are associated with different segments or different kind of uh, or, or different kind of network. The important thing is that uh, we we are not circumscribed to a full network end to end, or we are not circumscribed to purely in the the internet case. We are considering access as well, and the idea is that in principle. The real network is something that, which are the limits of the of the real network is, is something that depends precisely on the on the uh, uh, people running the the net, the, the uh, network digital the sorry the DTN the digital twin network to decide where, how many domains it would cover and uh, to decide if the integration can happen at the twin layer. The network digital twin itself basically is a data repository that is the upper end, so to say, of these uh, data uh, infrastructure we were talking about. Uh, a set of mechanisms for uh, providing the mappings. And the, uh, I'm, I'm doing this into a, ba a set of basic models related to the network topology and the elements, and a set of functional models uh, regarding, I don't know, security, or regarding the, the goals of the execution or whatever. And uh, the, the entity management that is precisely in charge of these orchestration aspects that we were uh, mentioning before about deciding which is the topology, which are the elements, which are the models that are active in a certain moment. And for sure, the security requirements and the, and the general orchestration, orchestration of everything that is happening. I'm, I'm close to finish, just in case that, uh, um, when talking about the, the potential applications, we have uh, a number of them on top of the, uh, so we, we can have uh, applications that are focused basically on management, applications that are based on, on intent-based networking, uh, applying conventional technologies simply because we want to, to uh, uh, we, we want to have a, a indirect control of the, uh, of the, um, of the uh, real network, or uh, more innovative in, in the case, in the case we are experimenting or, or making a first assessment of, of a particular technology. The important thing is that what we have is a safe playground, a lower cost, and with, with uh, quite fast uh, evaluation capacity and a control environment in which we can 
choose the variations that we want to, to apply. And, uh, and there are potentially different operational models. Is uh, once the chains are evaluated, once a, a decision is taken, they can be applied or doing applying a certain degree of control or different degrees of control, or even making decisions from uh, updating the the, physical, the the real network itself. The uh, the idea is that the applications come through an R phone interface of the uh, of the network digit between an important thing, and this is something that the applications can be eventually running in parallel several instances of the uh, of the of a of a network digital twin to make uh, precisely make uh, some choices or decisions, something similar to the A B testing in, in software. These are a few sample application scenarios we are considering in terms of uh, training at, at, both, at both levels, as I said, the humans and machines. The idea that uh, certain certification, the, uh, a, a digital twin network can provide an ideal environment for uh, testing in a, in a DevOps uh, loop applied apply to the network or uh, running specific experiments in something that uh, well uh, people term as a, as network first uh, fasting in which you can use it for see what if in some cases and make uh, and make decisions finally and just for for you to know if you're interested in working with this it's about the uh, challenges we we, for, we we see right now do we foresee in the dtn uh, technology when is uh, regarding the large uh, scale issues i have associated it with something that is, I mean, I, I, I hope you know it about the Borges is a paradox about this, uh, this idea that if you want a complete map, a map that completely reflects, uh, uh, reflects a, a particular territory, you need a map at this size of the territory. And the idea is precisely you cannot afford to have a digital twin network that is as complex as a, as a real network. And this is something that is where you find the, uh, the, the, the right balance. The idea of heterogeneity, heterogeneity is here, heterogeneity in network is here. One of the successes of the internet comes precisely because it has found a common denominator for a huge amount of, of heterogeneity is the idea that is, uh, is about identifying where lies the, uh, the correct balance between so, uh, over-specifying something in terms of uh, architectural interfaces and making it uh, uh, flexible enough so it is possible to, to, to interpret. The data modeling, the idea of having ontologies of uh, aggregating data and combining data or, or deriving some knowledge um, of, of data is, uh, is essential in both directions. That means yes, we are very much focused right now on monitoring because it's the, uh, let's say, it's the easier part or the part that is, uh, is better understood. But in the, uh, in the, in the control action is equally uh, uh, important. The, the need for real-time requirements uh, that implies that the uh, that the uh, our control army supply, so supply lines are longer and more difficult, and that implies that the uh, uh, that would require a, a, a quite agile uh, processing inside the digital twin network. This is one of the reasons why, for example, a data infrastructure that is able to combine and, and put together info, uh, the data into something closer to knowledge is is important. And these, uh, well, th these requirements will in in impact as well the uh, large, I mean, they are translated as well to, to the, uh, or, or translated into the same kind of issues as we have with the uh, scale, the network scale. And finally, uh, security risk. I mean, the same time, the same way we have a big brother uh, menacing us uh, behind the, uh, uh, all the um, uh, network facilities, we have this big twin issue as well. Is a is a is a control point that is extremely uh, appealing for attack. In the moment you have a, a digital twin network running in parallel with the real network, and uh, as I said before, privacy preservation in all sense, privacy and, and commercial secrecy, etc., is something that can become critical here because it's a, it's an enormous consumer of data, of very relevant data that has to be preserved. And with this, I mean, with this list of challenges that I hope uh, will uh, encourage you to uh, to collaborate with us on, on this, I um, think I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you, Diego. Um, we, we can still take maybe one question. We're a bit uh, over time. But... Uh, very quickly, Diego, 
No, I'm speaking, I have a question because you mentioned the challenges here, which I found very interesting. Is it part of what you, um, you will develop further in the draft in this work, or is it just listing uh, challenges and mm. I mean, up to which level do you plan to investigate those? Well, this is, I mean, this list of challenges probably not exactly uh, expressed as this because this is a little bit my view. Uh, are included currently in the draft. Some of them will be, we will have to address at least, uh, well, to identify which uh, uh, certain uh, research directions. I don't, I don't think that we will be in the position of, uh, of solving all of them within the draft. This is something that we would like, love to see collaborations and probably other documents, uh, more detail or probably uh, considering particular aspects that uh, are of uh, special relevance. So they are considering the draft. Some uh, uh, guidelines will be, uh, I, I'm, I'm rather sure, provided in the draft, but uh, I doubt that we will be able to solve everything in the draft. Okay, thank you. Maybe if I can also a quick question for you, Diego. Please. Um, <clears throat> In your vision of the digital twin, um, I have the impression that mostly it's relative to the data that you can take as input of the digital twin. Uh, maybe you can also put uh, give a, a input uh, events and so on. Do you think that digital twin, uh, if you have a model, uh, so the digital twin can serve also as uh, knowing what are the boundaries somehow of the data uh, related to a particular a particular uh, function of the system? So rather than just waiting for data and check if the system is uh, working according to a um, certain function, you can already know in advance what will be acceptable data. Uh, no, no, for sure. I mean, if you're talking about making predictions, for sure, this is what this should be one of the goals of a, of a digital thing. And in parallel, something that uh, we are experimenting as well, uh, and in particular, what, what I mean uh, with the same we is uh, my, my me, uh, myself and my team, is precisely with the idea of injecting, having the, uh, something that is closer, as close as possible to a digital twin. Probably we are not uh, that, we are not there yet, but uh, something that is very close to a digital twin and our idea, what we are doing is injecting uh, synthetic traffic under control conditions that are generated. For example, there are a group uh, from a university in Madrid that is working with us in, in running um, guns, uh, you know, these uh, adversarial networks that uh, mimic uh, a real, uh, the behavior of a real group of users of a real uh, segments of the, uh, of the network, injecting it in the twin and, and, and trying to in some cases, get a response, evaluate a particular strategy, etc., and, 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 and prediction as well, for sure. This is this is the idea precisely that at the end you you can run, let's say, fifty different networks and see what happens uh, according to the uh, to different conditions or, or, or different configuration. Okay, uh, okay. I, th I think it can be nice to, to discuss. I was more thinking about not pre somehow not really predicting, but more. Uh, some evaluate what will be the uh, acceptable data. So not testing data in advance, but know by the model what will be the some of maybe the values that uh, that I do. accept as input. I mean maximum, minimum. Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. That that, that the implies it derives some kind of knowledge, right? So um, the, uh, yes, exactly. Which, which so, are the values that make sense or not? Yeah yeah yeah. Sure sure as well. I mean this is something that. Uh, a, Another model could be used for, I mean, once you have something that is able to collect, able to mimic natural behavior, then that allows you to, to precisely experiment and try to, to identify uh, patterns, clusters of, of data or, or whatever. Yes, yes, why not? The, the, the digital, the, the VTN is, is a tool. The idea is that it's a hammer and the idea is that we have to find the, the nails to, uh, to, 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 to nail down. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Diego. Diego, just, just uh, here is Franco from Bologna. Um, I work with Walter that uh, I'm sure you, you know because it's part of the group. We have a national project in which we did something on, on a very similar concept related to uh, industrial applications since our area is very manufacturing oriented. 
if you don't mind, I will send you some. I, I to be honest, I don't understand if the approach we followed can be somewhat framed in the very good presentation you just gave. Thank you, thank you very much. By the way, it was very thank informing. Uh, so, if you don't mind, I will send you some some material, uh, and mm -hmm. I think it would be be very interesting to see whether we can frame uh, that approach uh, into this one because we already have a sort of written example deployed. Uh, well. In which the basic concept looks the same, but uh, I think it's probably nice to, to to talk about it a little bit. That, that, that would be lovely because I mean we we are, we are here exploring something that for us is a completely uncharted uh, territory, but uh, well it would be it would be quite interesting to to get some uh, some input from people that have been uh, experiencing this with, with these ideas, even even in the case it has not directly connected with mentor management, but this, uh, some of the ideas, some of the results. Well, the, that, that, that project valuable. was mostly related to network security, but uh, in the end of the mm -hmm. day, it's not a different topic. It's just a different way to look at the same yeah. problem. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Definitely, yes. Yeah, yeah, please. You, you have a, well, I, I'm sure yeah, you, yes. you can Don't, don't, don't worry. I, I will have Walter, Walter, Walter has it for sure. That's yes, it. I will find a way to contact you. Don't worry. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very Thank you, Franco. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for, I mean, thanks to the presenters. Thanks, everyone, for attending. I think we're already quite a bit over time. So um, let's uh, keep, uh, we will keep you posted for the next meetings. Thanks for the participation, and let's try to, to have good discussion, good, um, good research in the group. Thank you, thank you all, and uh, for those participating yeah. today, enjoy the rest of the week at uh, at Ayan. Yeah, yeah, very good. Well, the weekend. Very good <laughs> we wish it was a weekend, uh, Jerome. Sorry. No. Oh well, I, I got that you would say enjoy the rest of the weekend, and for one moment, no, I no, 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 no. I'm, I'm wishing, I'm wishing it was a weekend. <laughs> anyway. The rest of the week at Ayan, I just said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe some somebody needs some no. Even in different zone, we are no nobody's anymore in weekend. Mm, I, I don't think so. But, well anyway. <laughs> <laughs> would be okay. would do not be bad. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you all. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>